As soon as I first saw the project, uh, and they were running 256 players on a console, I, I you know, I, I said, okay, this is it. Uh, that's just something that nobody else is going to be doing. I don't think they'll be doing for quite some time. And uh, it really is on the sheer level of being able to pull that off on a rendering level, on a gameplay level. It's not just on the networking level. People have traditionally gone like 16, 32, 64. Past that, I mean, it's no man's land and we're doing it at 30 frames, you know? That's pretty huge. One of the critical things was that we actually optimized enough so that by the time you hit 256 people all starting to converge in and fight, that your frame rate stays up above 30 and you have a nice smooth experience. What we wanted to do was make a game where uh, you would be aware that there are that many players on the field, um, but that we would keep the gameplay manageable, that the, that the events and the battles would uh, be uh, you know, forgiving, that they wouldn't be so large that no one has a chance to excel, no one has a chance to win. It's involved a lot of new learning experiences for us. We can't look out at other games and say, well, what did they do? We've had to set up a lot of our own practices uh, for setting up levels and features and things like that. So a lot of the things that uh, we look to kind of in the conventions of a first-person shooter are still there and are still applicable to Mac. But there's a whole new litany of, of challenges that we've had to face. We definitely knew that people still have to feel empowered. Nobody wants to feel lost in a 256-player battle. We don't want to have a, a wide open area and dump 256 players on it. It's it's dangerous. You're going to be shot from all sides. So we had to add a lot of density and cover in the assets. Another thing is the, the options. We want to give players options in these 256 player battles in MAG. So we have to build all of those into the map to support just kind of the variety of players. So we want to be flexible, uh, setting up areas that new players, it's easy for them to drop in, very accessible, versus more skilled players, let them sneak around. You're looking at crowd behaviors rather than individual behaviors. But at the same time, we wanted to make sure that we are thinking about every individual to set of boots on the ground so that you as an individual can have a big influence on the battle. We've set up a lot of the missions to drop players in, uh, find combat within the first couple seconds. Uh, it should never be a lack of something to, to do or shoot at. What aren't you going to see in the game is, is the question. Big old mortar strikes, grenades going off, flashbangs, you know, airstrikes. Uh, you name it, it's probably in there. In other first-person shooters, you might see big events like helicopters going down or explosions or, you know, buildings uh, on fire. Those things are all scripted. They're happening outside the gameplay space. In my eye, it's the first-person first shooter where all of those things are happening around you as an effective gameplay. When you jump in there and you start to see, you know, that the helicopters coming in and the C-130s drop, you know, dropping just loads of, of people parachuting in, and there's mortars firing, and you can see all the way across the battlefield. It's really a scale that's, that's difficult to, to kind of um, paint the picture for people until they get in and play it, but it's something that you're amazed to see.